One of the most powerful parts of Airtable are its automations. Airtable automations really help separate it from other spreadsheet tools such as Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel because they are so powerful. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a few different Airtable automation examples so you can help visualize and see how they can help improve your business operations. If you don't know me, I'm Matt Gara, and my mission with this channel is to help non-technical creators innovate and operate well. As I mentioned, Airtable automations can be quite powerful, and I wanna show you a few examples so you can at least visualize what these Airtable automations are like. So let's dive into Airtable so you can see what they are. Now, as you can see, here's the Airtable base that we're gonna be using. We're only gonna be using one use case, and that is for a job applications. Now, I simplified it quite a bit, just so you can understand these different automations a little better. Now, here you can see in this Airtable automations, I've already created this field. I've given us at least one piece of sample data. It's again, very simple. But what I've done here is, so Airtable, the nice thing about Airtable, right, is that everything can live in one place. So instead of having like this Google form, and then that goes to a market, like a Google sheet, and then you, you know, have to check that manually, Airtable can actually have everything in one place and fewer clicks. So you can see, I just created this really simple Airtable base or Airtable form that has their first name, last name, email, what job they're applying for, their resume, cover letter, and why do they think they're a good fit? So I've already, again, pre-filled it. So we'll go into the full view and you can see it here. Here's the information that they put in. Now, if you haven't used Airtable forms before, you can see that not all the fields are filled out and that is on purpose because those fields are for more internal processes. So this first example that I wanna show you is for emailing candidates because yes, we only have one candidate at the moment, but in theory, yes, we could have hundreds of candidates to these roles and manually emailing every single candidate is really time consuming. Even if you have a templated email where you just copy paste and you have to edit everything, like that's really time consuming and you might be doing that right now. The nice thing about this automation is that all you have to do is click a few buttons and that email is sent and it's still personalized and feels like a real email, not just some transactional email from a big company. So let's get into what this automation is like. So you can see if I click automations here and I wanna create a custom automation. Now I'm gonna say email candidates for moving it forward. Now you can have a bunch of different emails set up and you can even do it with conditional automations, but we're not gonna cover the conditional automations in this video, but it is something if you wanna get more complicated, you could run it this way, but I'm just gonna send one email as if we're going to move them forward in the interview process. We're gonna request an interview with this email. So the email candidates for an interview you can name these automations however you'd like. I highly recommend naming them because especially if you're building out, even if, even if it's like five or 10 automations and you come back to it three months from now, it can get really confusing really quickly. So I'll either add the trigger and win match, win record matches conditions. Now I want this because I don't want it to, like if it was create a new record, every time they submit an application, they're gonna get an email and I don't want that. I want it to only email specific candidates that we wanna move forward in the interview process. So I'll select the table, and so we have only one table with applicants. And the more important part is the conditions on which we want this email to send. Again, we don't want to send it to every single applicant. We only want it to send to the candidates that we want to interview. So for that, I already created a few fields to make this work. And the way I like to think of automations and conditions is really like a two-factor authentication. You can do this with like only one field, but to me, that's a little nerve-wracking because if if you let's say you pick the wrong status for a candidate they'll send them that email automatically because you only have one. Now, if you have two, you can prevent those like accidents from happening. So that's why I always do it in this like two factor authentication method. It's a personal preference, but that's the way I like to be I like to play safety first, especially when it comes to big things like this with job applications. So what I have set up is that it's an action and it says sends request for interview. And I do it with a send date. So the send date would have to be today's date. So that's more like my two factors. Again, you don't need this like send date necessarily, but this is more just like a safety protocol for myself. Now to test these automations, you need at least one record that matches those exact conditions. I already pre-filled that out. So you can see here, there's send request for interview and the send date is today. So that's why when I go to email candidates for interview, I'll go to this one again, I'll hit test the trigger and it's successful. Now, if you don't have a record, that matches it, it'll say unsuccessful and you can move forward with setting up the rest of the automation, but you might not, it might not end up working. So I always recommend at least testing it and seeing how it works on that side of things. All right, let's move on to this next part of the automation 
and that is the actual action we want it to run. So we'll hit add action. And these are the purely Airtable automations within Airtable. You can, you can see here, there's send an email, but it'll come from like an Airtable email address. So it's not that great. I highly recommend kind of staying away from that, especially if it's external. If it's internal, it's probably more okay. But if it's external, it does it feels really automated if you're using this send email here. All right, now it depends on which email client you're using. I'm using a Gmail account, so I'm gonna use Gmail and send email. Okay, now you have to connect, pre-connect your Gmail to Airtable. It takes about two seconds, it's pretty quickly. I've already pre-connected it, so I don't have to worry about that too much. And I'll hit select email account, which is this Gmail account. So here's the really powerful part about Airtable automations, and that is the dynamic data that you can put into it. It's really similar to the, how Zapier works and their dynamic data. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a whole video on Zapier automations and I'll put the link down below. Now, how you can use dynamic data in Airtable is if you hit select this plus button and you can pick which field you want it to put in this two column. So in this case, right, I want it to email the candidate. So I'll put their email here. So the field values in their email and the subject is I'm gonna keep this non-dynamic, so it was created as a static email, and I'll put interview request, keep it really simple. Now here's where static and dynamic data really fit in really beautifully together in Airtable. So in this part of it, in this message part of it, I wanna put hi, their first name, so I'll hit again this plus button here, and I will select, scroll down to their first name, comma. So again, it's completely automated, but it's gonna put their first name there, so it feels personalized, and it might not even feel like an automated email, which is really, really awesome. Okay, you'd be way more formal in an interview request, but we're, again, we're just using an example. So with that, now that we have this, one of the cool parts about Airtable is you can actually preview this email. So I'll hit generate a preview, and you can see it would say who is it going to, here's the subject line, and here's the actual the dynamic data here. So you can say it says, hi, Matt, we would like to interview, can you let us know what times work for you? So that's what that email will look like if we actually sent it and it looks great to me. So we'd be all set to go. With all of that, this automation is ready to go and I would turn it on and move it forward so that every time we wanna interview a candidate, all I have to do again is go back to what the conditions are for Airtable to send that email, which would be send, send a request for an interview and today's date. So again, you don't have to copy paste a template email from somewhere and put it into your email and manually email all these candidates that you wanna interview. Everything is automated within Airtable and still feels really personalized. It's even coming from your personal email. Let's move on to the next example of an Airtable automation that'd be really helpful in this use case with job applications. And that is the status change. Now you can see the status change is currently blank, which isn't really helpful, especially if there's multiple hiring managers, hiring candidates, interviewing them. Like no one actually knows what's happening with these candidates. And that's problematic. We want internal communication to be just as good as external communication. So to do that, we want these statuses to change as candidates are moving forward. And if we can automate some of that, it makes life a lot easier rather than like have to select, hey, they applied, like that's really annoying. So here's how I'm gonna set that up and make it really simple and so that these statuses are changing as you're moving processes forward. So let's create a new automation here and I'll hit change original status. And this one's really simple, even simpler than the last example because we're not just doing it on match conditions. I want it every time there's a new applicant or essentially when a new record's created to change that status. So when a record is created, I'll hit applicants, I'll hit the test trigger because there's already a test data there. So that was successful. And I wanted to change that status. So I wanted to update record here. And again, these are the Airtable automations that are internal to Airtable and these automations are external tools that you might be using already. Some of these tools you might never use and that's totally okay. But in this case, again, I'm keeping it really simple. I'm gonna use update record. So I'll do that. Select which table I wanted to update from, which is applicants. And here's the record ID. Now a record ID is essentially the unique like ID. It's like kind of like a social security number for an Airtable record. It's overcomplicating it probably a little bit, but it's just a unique identifier to the actual record that you wanna update. So in this case, I wanted to update the record from the record that was just created. So if you hit this plus button, again, this, this is again this is dynamic data. So I'll continue here and I'll hit insert the record ID. So we're good there. With the record ID set, I can change pretty much any field that's gonna be in that record. 
But again, in this case, I'm keeping it really simple. I just want to change that status. So you'll see here it's status and this can be a little bit confusing. So status is a single select field, but you can't just select that those potential options there. You have to actually type it in. So in this case, I just want it to be applied. Another bug with this is that even if you have a typo, if it's like lowercase, it will create another option. So you like if you have all these typos, even if it's like lowercase, it could you can have like three different applies, which it can alter, especially if you're running like data collection on that piece. So just a heads up if you're using this automation in particular. All right, now that we have it, we'll hit generate a preview. And you can see here, here's the record and it changed the status to applied. So it did exactly what I was hoping it for. Now let's move on to the last example and that is sending the actual calendar invite after they've accepted an interview. For this last example, I wanna show you how you can send a GCAL invite through Airtable because let's face it, sending a GCAL or a Google Calendar invite can be quite click heavy. You have to go from your Gmail to the Google Calendar, select the right date, and pick you know the right email, all these different things, and all that info you already have in Airtable. And I wanna be able to show you how you can actually automate that GCAL invite so it simplifies your life even further. So let's jump back into Airtable. And as you can see here, we have the interview start time and end time. We're only gonna interview for 30 minutes. And we have the action, the send date that we've previously used. And in this case, we have to pick which, who's actually interviewing them. So I'm gonna pick Bob here, as you can see, and it pulls their information. Now a quick note here about linked records. This is what we call a linked record. So it's pulling from a different table. So you can see we have two different tables. One is applicants and the second one is reviewer, is, is interviewers. Interviewers, this is really helpful to have different types of data separated, especially if you're using for like data collection processes and to keep your tables really clean. So just a quick note about linked records. All right, now that we have that, let's jump into the automation itself for sending a GCAL invite to the candidates and the interviewers. So what I wanna do is create a custom automation and I want it to be send calendar invite. Okay, so send a calendar invite. And again, just like the first example that we use, we wanted to match record conditions. So we'll go to applicants, and the conditions we want, we're gonna use the same fields that we actually previously used in that first example about sending them a request for an interview over email. So I'm gonna hit, which, what's, the, what's the action that I wanted to run? In this case, right, send the calendar invite. And the send date would be today. So we'll select that. And again, for, to be able to test the trigger, these fields need to match for at least one record. And I don't have that right now, so let's go back so what the record is, and I'll just change it really quickly to send a in calendar invite and it's already today's date. So now when we test it, it should be good to go. So you can see here, we'll test it and test results are good. So let's keep moving forward with the actual calendar invite. Now that we have the trigger for the automation all set up, let's go into the actual action, which is sending that Google calendar invite. So you can see here, we'll scroll down to Google calendar and we want it to create an event. So we'll do that, select the Google calendar that we want, which is already pre-connected, and then select which calendar within your GCAL you want it to send to. So in this case, I want it to go to the mat time blocking. And then here's where it gets really cool because instead of it being static data, like it shows here, I want it to be dynamic data. And to get to that, what you have to do is go to this gear icon here. And because we have a field that says, hey, here's the interview start time, I want to select that field from the actual record that's pulling up. So I'll hit again this plus button, go to the record information, and then select the interview start time. And I'll do the same thing for the end time. So I'll select end time here. And for the title, I'll make it a combination of static and dynamic. So I'll put interview with their full name so everyone knows. There's that, and it's an interview for ABC company. For location, you could just have one Zoom link for all of your different interviews. If you're gonna go that route, I highly recommend having a waiting room for Zoom so you don't have candidates just accidentally coming into the wrong meeting. Now, if you have an actual in-person event, you could have another table that has all the different building numbers and addresses there. So you can just pull it up and pull the active record there. So there's another option with that. In this case, I'm just gonna put zoom.com to keep it really simple. And for attendees, you don't put their actual names, you wanna put their emails in there so it sends the actual calendar invite to the right email address. 
So for this, I wanted to send it to the candidate's email and I wanted to send it to the interviewer's email here. So I put the comment after that one and I'll put their email here. There's value. So you can see here's the candidate's email and here's the interviewer's email and I put a comment there so it separates those two values. All right, so we have all that set up. Airtable does have this select video conferencing. It only has Google Meet in here set up. I never use Google Meet, so I'm not using it for that. All right, and if I hit test action, it'll actually send the calendar invite. Let's see how that looks. Now here we are in Google Calendar, and as you can see, here's the calendar invite with all the accurate information for that particular candidate. So this can save you a bunch of time with your Google Calendar invites, especially if you're having a lot of different candidates and you don't wanna manually send all those different Google Calendar invites because that's really time consuming and really click heavy. And also if you're not, if you have all these different processes happening in different tools, such as you know you have Airtable or maybe it's a Google Form, then Airtable and Google Calendar and your Gmail, that's a lot of clicks and a lot of different places for information. If you simplify everything into Airtable, it can make it really simplified and much more efficient. Now, these examples with Airtable are really simplified and there's a lot of different automations you can run. As I hinted at earlier, you can look into the conditional automations, which is, which is a new feature from Airtable and it's a really powerful way of running automations. There's also scripts if you can look into those. Now, if this video was helpful, I would love it if you can give it a like and even subscribe to the channel so we can continue to help non-technical creators innovate and operate well.